Hi guys, I'm Iris there. Welcome to season two of The Bridge, Africa's number one financial literacy show brought to you by Business Day. This season is proudly powered by FCMB. Hi guys, welcome to The Bridge. Hi, Alice. Hi. Hi. So, Michael Worsley. Yes. You are the head of the youth Yitsu. segment at FCMB. Yeah, yeah. Great. Cynthia Owus. Osumo. Osumo. I've been struggling with that one since behind the cameras. Um, you are a beneficiary of FCMB's Flex Turn program. Yeah. Yay. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. So today um, we're going to be focusing on careers because okay. The Bridge is basically a show that helps to break down financial jargon to the African millennial. And obviously we know that how to make money is a huge part of financial literacy. So today we're going to focus on careers and, you know, what that means to both of you. I want you to share your stories, especially you, Cynthia, because I hear that you went through a very rigorous um, FCMB program that has made you so much stronger in the workplace today. True. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your experience. What is the Flex Turn program about? Okay, so Flex Turn program is a program organized by FCMB for young graduates or fresh graduates who want to work in the career field. Then, by know most times, you don't really know who to meet, mm. especially with the young ones. You have this big idea in your head. Mm. You don't know where to start or companies to start from. So I saw the Flex 10 program for 2.0 on the internet. Okay. So I felt, well, it's a good thing to give it Let a try. Let me just give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. So, so how we enrolled for it was, you have to do a 45 second video of yourself, mm. telling FCMB why they should hire you as a flex then. Okay. So it's more like sell yourself, sell what you can do. So well done. Thank what you. made FCMB come up with this fantastic idea to um get interns okay uh we at fcmb we were thinking about um, um connecting with young people both in two layers mm. those that are in, interested in entrepreneurship and the career driven people I from the entrepreneurship it. aspect we have two programs that are addressing that part mm. and that um, the flex youth entrepreneurship program and also the flex your creativity now to address um the the career driven people we also we came up with a flex ten initiative yeah. and that's for young graduates uh for them to showcase their talents mm. to the within the corporate world and when we started that program in the last two years um we've seen the results so far in which uh, a lot More of these confidence. young people they grow in their confidence uh, they become better they learn the, the the ethics and skills of the corporate world mm. and by the time they finish their nyc program they are better yeah. They are well trained, they are well equipped, and they are ready to face the workplace. I have to say that I really love this approach because we live in a world today where people are always saying, oh, you have to become an entrepreneur to make money, as opposed to telling people that they can be entrepreneurial in their thinking, even if they're working in a nine to five job. So we have lots of people who are going towards starting their own business, but are not well equipped to start their own businesses. We need to start telling people more about, you know, career paths as well. We don't need to go to the other extreme of it because I'm always saying to people, not everyone can be Mark Zuckerberg. Some people are True. going to be Sheryl Sandberg yeah. and we need to get more Sheryl Sandbergs to come and build structures within those um, businesses so that they can thrive and they can scale. So we don't have like subsistence style um, businesses. So tell me what it was like your first day you arrive at FCMB, it must have been intimidating. Um, all these adults, what was it like? So, the first day we had an inauguration at the FCMB building. Mm -hmm. So, we got some of the top officials at FCMB talk to us. And I'm like, oh, I really love to be like this person. <laughs> you see more people motivate you and be like, yeah, I'm on the right track. I'm on the right track. <laughs> so, I was posted to Insight Communications. Fantastic. So, I first that insights communication. Oh, you know, I haven't actually worked with a big agency. Okay. So, 
getting there and I'm seeing so many people, not just so many people, some are young, some are not young. Mm. And you know when you greet someone, people are like, oh, okay. okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, how am I going to fit into the space? But and it's very intimidating. Yes, exactly. It is at the beginning. So because you don't know who is the best person to talk to, who is the best person to mingle with, mm -hmm. and all that. You just have to find yourself in the process. But if, what I always believe is, I believe in myself. I believe this is what I want and I'm going to get it. Mm. So I just try as much as, don't let whatever you're seeing or whatever you hear people do get to you. Just know what you're here for. You have to be confident. Yes. Like you have Build to Build that confidence yes. in me that. It's almost it? like you have to start talking to yourself and saying, you know what, I can do this. I can talk to this person. I'm not going to die. Exactly. And I'll be like, I'm sure when I was like, I, I believe when they were my age, they actually felt the same. They when, grew out it. So yeah. me, I'll definitely grow out it out one it. day. Now, do you know what? When I was, um, as soon as I finished secondary school, my parents made me do internships at Nigerian banks every single summer till I finished university. And I remember like, Imagine like a 19 year old or an 18 year old in a suit that's too big for her, coming to work every morning and people are looking at, her, at me like, who brought this child here? Like, why are you here? And I remember feeling so intimidated by all these older, accomplished people, but it taught me a lot of things because people will leave you to sit down there in a the corner yeah. as in, and be okay with it. So I had to step out of my comfort zone and go and ask people questions. Exactly. So what is it that you do here? How can I help? And I started learning how to, you know, add value even when it was scary. So, and you have to, you know, learn how to talk to people and communicate with people. How do you see yourself now um, as compared to like when you first started? So there's a huge difference. At first, when I went there, I'm always, I was always shy to actually even talk to my boss. <laughs> <laughs> so now when I'm talking to him, like, look at me while you talk. I'll be like, okay. But now, it's there's a huge difference. I can actually walk up to someone mm. and say this. And my boss was one of the person that made that impact on me. He'll be like, the person is not going to hit you. Hit you. So you just, just say yes. It. The confidence is just say whatever you want to say. It's either a yes or a, or no. a no. So, so Michael, how do you it. how do you um? prepare these interns to go to these different organizations because first of all i think the organization needs to be prepared themselves to be able to accommodate interns and the interns need to know like the do's and don'ts like what to wear to this sort of office how to address people things like that so do you do anything that kind of prepares them for you know that experience yeah starting with their video the okay. videos uh, before their selection gives us an idea of who they are by the time we come up with our final selection of um, the 10 or 20 interns we're going to take for that year, we call them to the office, we give them yeah. briefings, and from there on, post them to various organizations. Well, while that's happening, we also make sure we, we, we prep them ahead of where they are going to, mm. their expectations, and um, the kind of behavior we want them to portray when they mm. get over there, because they are representing FCMB. Yep. Yes. And for us as a brand, our integrity matters is at stake mm. when we send them there, and we expect them to go there, deliver, show the best, and come back with good news about the program and how beneficial the Flex 10 program has, has been, been for them. So how many people have gone through these um, programs, the Flex 10 and the Flex Creativity? Okay, yeah, the Flex 10 and your, the Flex Your Creativity are two different. The Flex Your Creativity is um, encouraging young entrepreneurs that are into three um, uh, categories. Um, mm. Either they're into makeup, um, okay. Either makeup artists, um, air stylers, or fashion, fashion designers, okay. fashion accessories, sellers. So we have that category of people. Those are young people mm. that want to go into the creative aspect. And we have that program, Flex Your Creativity Address, addressing that segment. Then for the Flex 10, uh, we've done two seasons. We're going okay. to do another one this year. The first season, we had about 10 young okay. people that were selected. The second year, and we had more partners because they saw um, How the, the, the success, first yeah, products on. that came out of the first one. And um, from the second season, uh, people like um, <laughs> came on board. <laughs> yeah, she came on board, and they are still telling the good success story. Yeah, and that has I been am. fantastic for us because it gives us more justification to carry on to this carry project on doing. and touch the lives of more people which is our objective for, for us. I love it. I'm sure that there are a lot of, how many people actually apply? 
is it in the hundreds or the thousands for you to pick 10 people in thousands I wow know, because yeah. when i even applied i think i applied on the th either the third day or the fourth day i was 192 wow yeah uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of the young people see that Many. there's an opportunity here. All they need to do is to pick up their smartphone, do a video of themselves, and make sure they sell themselves as uh, in in that short thirty seconds video. So, Cynthia, what was your biggest challenge? You know, going through this experience. Mm -hmm. My biggest challenge. What? <clears throat> what would I say would be my biggest challenge? Okay, for the fact that, first of all, I was posted to a communication agency mm -hmm. and at first, I just didn't know what it was all about. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was all about. So communication is not something that you had really thought felt about? Yes, yeah, it's doing. So, but I felt one thing about life is you just have to be... Try. Not just try, you have to diverse. Mm -hmm. So, I got in there and not knowing what or how they make things work there and how they go about their day-to-day -day business. Mm -hmm. So, the first week, I was just trying to follow up and, you know, you have to give in. You don't have to let the person behind you not know mm -hmm. you don't know what you're doing. So, mm -hmm. I had to keep up with what they're doing, even though it had to make me go back and ask questions a lot so that was the first big challenge i faced but so within... that's very interesting because i find that a lot of young people um beat them themselves up a lot for saying oh how come i don't have it all figured out i should know what i want to be doing by now but you know trying giving it a shot and being open-minded yes it also gives you an opportunity to learn More. other skills that you didn't you think that exactly. you were going to exactly because know. all these other skills you would never find it in school mm -hmm. you can't find it in school your lecturer can't teach you that in school so this is what you learn on your own in the outside mm -hmm. world and that's what fcmb helped me achieve achieve i think it's amazing because I think it's really important, especially when you're young, when you're in your 20s, to try everything. Exactly. Take on, er say yes to every opportunity. Exactly. Take on any job because you just don't know what skills you're going to pick up or what experiences are going to form, you know, what becomes maybe your purpose going forward. So, Michael, what was your biggest challenge? You're dealing with all these young people, creating programs for university students, people who have never been in the workplace before. It must have had some, you know, challenges. Yeah, you're right, Arise. <laughs> um, when we started this project, uh, we never envisioned that the scale in which it would go to would get this big. After the first year, second year, we did um, uh, 20 um, people were selected for the Flex 10. Uh, in all of this, we had um, more applicants. Thousands of people keep applying every year. It means that we have to scale up on our own um, entry procedure, how we select winners, double up on our own data collection and registration, mm. and sorting out. So over the years, this has been growing bigger, and we expect that the project grows bigger. That's been a, a challenge for us, but we're addressing that as the year goes by, and also being able to accommodate everybody from mm. anywhere you are in, across the country. It's such an exciting opportunity, I can imagine, with the advent of social media, it's now easier for people to apply yes. and reach call out for to me, you. Call for entry through social media. Yeah. Also for our Flex um, our Youth Entrepreneurship Program, which is a campus-based event where we bring successful entrepreneurs to come and train students on various areas like digital marketing, content creation and distribution, uh, photography, business finance. You know, in areas like this, we believe that young people can actually start up businesses mm. from within the digital space, for, even from campus. Even from campus. You know, we take all these things back from campus to, to to campus to say, okay, how can we engage young people from campuses? And from from campuses, we move to NYSC where we get to flex then, mm. and postgraduate also. We mm. find we have um, a whole lot of programs that we are using to address. I think all that's this. amazing because a huge problem um, that you're helping to solve is unemployment or making those people you know in university or fresh graduates more employable because obviously we have this problem in Nigeria where people come they have degrees but they don't really have the skills that you know they need 
to be valuable in the workplace. And that's what the program brings mm. to them, bringing skills that they won't teach them in school, and mm. they are able to learn those things from school, and even after so school, we still have prepared, programs, and they're yeah. better prepared for workplace. It's like a boost for your degree. Okay, Cynthia, to wrap up, what is your own advice to young people who are looking for job opportunities or are just starting work, you know, the same way you had to go through that experience? What are the lessons that you learned or what's the advice that you have to give to them? So my advice would be, first of all, for my fellow young ones who are out there, the truth is there's this thing going that, like you said earlier, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. No. If you feel you still want to, because they feel there's still no job out there. So if you still use, you really want to strive into the career field, you should keep that in mind mm. and try out all possible opportunities you can see. Sometimes I advise friends, even if it's a volunteer, a voluntary job, yeah. pick it up. Even if it's just for one week, two week, one month, whatever skill you acquire there, you can't acquire it anywhere mm. else. And it's written in you already. No one can take it out from you because I believe we are what we continually do. So we keep, whatever you keep doing, before you know it, to perfect on it. And so, you know, even if you hate your job, yeah, exactly. Skills that you, you can pick up, and you and the thing is, at first you won't even know it's already in mm -hmm. you. Probably to when you get to your next job, I'll be like, ah, I, thought, I actually got this from mm -hmm. my previous job. So whatever you want to do, keep striving at it. You will get there. That's what I believe. And we are what we continually do. So keep putting in that effort. Mm -hmm. And I always tell my friends, and even in the office when I say they laugh at me, I keep telling them this word, and I tell them, I believe excellence is not an act. Mm -hmm. It's a habit. And have it every day. Yeah, thing. every day thing you keep doing, you keep doing, you keep doing, and you see yourself at the top. And you just need to stay open-minded about, yes, you know, about, about sales, learning. About yeah. learning, exactly. So Michael, tell us about youth engagement um, for FCMB. Why is this important? What are the important programs that you're running right now? Okay, well, youth en engagement is important to us because um, we define youth um, as a segment of people between the ages of 16 and 30. And we have a, a product called Flex, that's our youth product. So Flex is the product we use in addressing this um, youth, youth market. And Flex um, stands on the three part of three uh, uh, um, key pillars for us. The key pillars are, the first one is uh, fun, the second is freedom, and third is friendship. Because these are three things that drive youth behavior. Mm. And when we put these three things together, we're able to come up with financial services that can help address um, this segment of people, or this, this market. Mm. And it's so important to us because this market is majorly driven by engagement. So we come up with programs, and the programs are around um, financial services, mm. uh, um, fund programs, and also programs that speak to their future. Uh, Flex Youth Entrepreneurship Masterclass, which also speaks to that in that direction. And also our fun programs, Flex Your Creativity, Dare to Dream. We have mm. programs in that nature that encourages fun, where young people learn new things, display their skills and talents, and it's, it's so much for us. So this segment is majorly driven by um, programs or engagement programs. So those financial products, are they targeted towards their parents or them? The financial uh, uh, programs are targeted at them because okay. they are old enough. A whole lot of them are older than 18. They are mm. already in university. So we take uh, programs around entrepreneurship, around technology to them so that they can understand that. That um, is important for you to have a bank account. A bank account. So start saving. Uh, exactly. Financial mm. advisory services to them so that they can connect with us very quickly and they understand the importance of savings, investment, and mm. also how to run a proper business, mm. even at a very young age. So those financial trainings or programs or engagements mm. are important at that age because a whole lot of young people are so aspirational these days. They want to try out new things. They yeah. want to start their own business. Yeah. Like she was mentioning something that young people want to, they all want to become entrepreneurs. Yeah. But with programs like Flex10, that we're able to nurture those skills, mm. learn something about structure, learn something about how to run a proper business, mm -hmm. so that when you move out to start yours, it's like, much more easier. Mm. You've understood the basics, you understand hierarchy, structure, you understand business operations, 
process flow and the rest of it, those things are already within your grasp before you go out there and start up something. Okay, so explain to me the role of your partners um, when you're doing these programs. How involved are they? And how do you find them or pick them? Okay, um, a whole lot of the partners indicate interest in, um, in joining, in partner with FCMB for the Flex 10 programs because they've seen the success of the first season, second, and this time around, we, had, uh, we have more people come in to say, okay, we want to get interns from you, and we get them involved in every stage of the process. Now, first of all, when the, um, the, the, the prospective interns um, send us their videos online, we select, uh, we take them through uh, a whole process of rigorous screening, mm -hmm. and before we present it to the, 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 the judges, to select uh, our top 10 or top 20 candidates. So once we, get, when, once we have the top 20 candidates, uh, we bring them on board. We also call in the partners and we tell the partners to tell us uh, what are the kind of persons you're looking at or the kind of skills that you want to take for. in yeah, as a, for interns for mm -hmm. your organizations. Once they tell us, okay, these are the things we're looking at, top three things you're looking at, then we try to match the candidates that have those skills with the, the partners are going to take them as interns because it's so important so that everybody benefits from this arrangement mm. so that the partners see that okay they're getting quality people that will work with them mm. and also for the interns is also very important so that they get a sense of fulfillment or satisfaction having gone through the whole process they are they are they are now being selected into where they want to be in essence putting square pegs in square holes mm. so we want to have the right fit of people for the right organizations so that is how the partners get involved in every stage and over the years like she went to advertising okay. it was never a dream to become but she had certain skills that would fit that area yeah. and do that skills is being it's being reflected now i'm enjoying it now <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to be before you did you have an idea of what kind of career path you wanted? Mm -hmm. Not really. I was just trying to figure everything out. out in my head. And right now, I see But good on you, though, now. because insights retained you. Yeah. So you, you come in through FCMB. You do it for how long? Three months three months you do a three-month internship and they could have told you bye-bye sorry yeah. you know so you must have done really well for them to have retained you how long have you been working you know with them you know after since after the internship mm. months now like seven months wow that's seven amazing congratulations Thank and i hope you. that you continue to shine and thrive in your um, position at insight I hope to and I will. <laughs> it's hard to expand my business. You know, many farmers depend on me. All these banks say they don't see my vision. Sorry for interrupting. That's still exactly true. Just last year, I had planned to expand my hospitality business. It was tough, but I met the right people. Who exactly are these people? My bank. FCMB. With the right people who believe in your visions, getting to your desired destination is easier and quicker. Let's help you take the next step. FCMB, my bank and I. That was an amazing episode with Cynthia Osumo and Michael Wose from FCMB. He's the head of the youth segment. So the three highlights from this episode were one, like Cynthia, lots of millennials come out of university not really sure about what they're going to do, whether they're going to become entrepreneurs or intrapreneurs. But the important thing is taking advantage of the opportunity like Cynthia did with FCMB. The second thing is about skills. A highlight for me was Cynthia said something that was very pertinent. Excellence is not an event. It is something that you do every day. Most university graduates need to understand that their university degrees are not enough in this time and day to be employable. There are other skills that you need to learn even when you're on the job. Because Cynthia was very, very mindful of this, she has been able to progress in her um, place of work at Insight. So, Think about the skill sets that you can learn on the job. Even if you're in a job that you hate, there's still so much that you can learn if you pay attention. And finally, be a value addition wherever you find yourself, whether you're working for yourself or running your own business. Um, Cynthia was retained by Insight Communications because she's a value addition and she has an excellent mindset. 
Thank you so much for watching this episode. See you next time.